Good morning and welcome to St. David's. I'm Andy Taylor, the rector here. Not the same Taylor clan. We've had three Taylor clans here and we uh, are so blessed that so many of you have come to celebrate the life of Art Taylor. And I um, just ask you, since we're still getting in practice of being together, to silence your cell phones if you haven't already, because we kind of forget that. And um, uh, what else to know? Um, masks are optional, but we strongly encourage them still, because there are more and more COVID variants going around. So please be seated. Uh, our opening remarks are from Ron Disrosies, there he is. And please come on forward. I usually invite a friend or family member to kind of bring the essence of a person into the space with us. And so Ron is going to share some stories about art to bring him in with us. Thank, Thank you. you. We first met art in early to mid 70s at All Saints Church in Attleboro on one Sunday. Who could imagine that that day would be the beginning of a nearly 50-year friendship? Art loved being with friends and helping people. He was part of the All Saints Movers, a volunteer team who helped fellow members, church members move to different houses. He was also part of a tool time group which did maintenance projects around the church. He even helped destroy our kitchen, but we were remodeling, so that's okay. <laughs> One of his favorite things to do at church was head up the old country store as part of our annual fair. He would secure the finest cold cuts, great big wheels of Cabot cheddar cheese, and other items to be sold. His desire to help others was certainly enhanced by his being an Eagle Scout. I remember one time swimming at the Blackwell's pool one evening with Art and Wendy, and I watched what I thought was the beginning of interest in each other. And I was right. And I was blessed to be asked to be the best man at their wedding a while later. And now on to his passion, sailing. We would sail as often as possible, often midweek, at night, in Narragansett Bay. We both loved the evening and night skies. One day we sailed to Potter's Cove on Payson's Island with our sons, Jeff and Craig, for an overnight stay, and that was a memorable time. Another time, we sailed right up to the dock at the Lobster Mania, a restaurant, and had a nice meal. Upon sailing away, the whole evening seemed so extravagant, almost decadent. Now, probably you don't know this, but once in a while, I would go drifting while at the tiller of his boat and not pay as much attention as he should. So I'd have to tell him to turn to port so he wouldn't run into that buoy. One more event so you know that sailing isn't always calm. The boat had just been put into the water in Fall River, and we were motoring to the mooring site in Tiverton. I went to below to check things out, and suddenly he yelled that we were taking on water. Not a good thing. Panic at first, but he solved the problem. It seemed that a drain plug was not reinstalled after winterization. And sailing was not the only thing we did, because there was so much maintenance to do on a boat, as some of you know. One late fall day, Art remembered that he had not drained the water from his engine after hauling the boat out of the water for the winter. Since it was now late November, we hustled to the boatyard. The water was frozen, but not a hard freeze yet. So we decided to start the engine for a few seconds at a time so that the heat would thaw the water. And of course, the battery was dead. <laughs> Have you ever seen a car jump-starting a sailboat? We did it, and it worked out, and we got the antifreeze in. Two years ago, Carol and I met Art and Celia for the first time near here and had lunch. We had wonderful conversations 
and learn how to use a smartphone translator to get to know Celia. And that was interesting. Due to COVID, we did not meet again until five or six weeks ago at the canal for lunch. It was like there was no time lapse since our last meeting. We talked about old times, like the time one night we ran aground and had to get on both sides of the boat and tip it over so we get out of the mud. Not quite tip it over, but. He talked about his continuing health problems. We took pictures and made preliminary plans to meet in New Bedford at a Portuguese restaurant. We all hugged, said goodbye with assurances to meet. To meet again soon. I am so blessed we had this lunch meeting and feel thankful that I made that call to set it up. I know there have been many mentions of sailing during this year of eulogy, but it's because he loved it. So much, in fact, that the name of his boat means she is my delight. It was his place of quiet, and peace, and calm, and mine too. I know that he is up there in the glorious sea in heaven, sailing his boat, the Hepzibah, in calm seas and fair winds. And all was well. Sail on, my dear friend. John, thank you. And before we begin the worship service, I just ask your forgiveness for a couple typos and things. Um, I proofread, and the, the second lesson matches the heading of 1 Corinthians 3, but it wasn't the lesson Art asked for. It should have been 1 Corinthians 13. So when we get to that, you're going to hear a different passage, um, and it'll be familiar. It's often read at weddings about love, being patient and kind. And then we'll have a special treat during the Amazing Grace song. A family friend, Adam Gower, is going to play... Uh, the piano, and he'll do a version. If you got a little half sheet of paper, it has uh, words for that version, and it's something that Art loved that he heard um, Adam play, and it's something Adam learned at a happening retreat weekend. So you're in for a real treat. So please stand with me as we begin our worship together with Morning is Broken. I am the resurrection and I am the life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And 
Everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So, then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Art. We thank you for giving him to us, his families and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to rake down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Twenty-third Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with thee, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is Corinthians 1, 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, 
but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may, so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to the end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will face, then we'll see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the good shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God who loves us and lays down his life for us. Amen. So the purpose of the homily is to take the spirit of this gathering and this memory of this incredible human being and turn that all toward the altar where we meet God in person, in the flesh, in the blood. And if you look over there, you'll see a little black box And that black box is Art's communion kit. Art took very seriously his work as a Eucharistic visitor. And I think that embodies, literally, (laughs) his desire to be an incarnate presence of God's love, God's good shepherd persona to the people around him. And I I think of the folks that he visited. He visited people who were blind, people with dementia, people who couldn't walk anymore, people who suffered cancer. And he probably thought he would say goodbye to them first and say good farewell off to the next life to them. And I don't think he expected that he would be one of the first ones to pave the way. But he was so faithful to that ministry. And what it revealed to me about art is his deep rootedness in the truth that love is more powerful than anything in the world. And his deep belief that the love that Jesus in particular showed in his life and ministry, in his sacrifice, And his resurrection and ascension was not a fairy tale. And it also showed me that he had the integrity to live by that love in all that he did and all the people he loved. And you don't come across people with that depth and integrity all the time. And so we miss him. And grief is real. Tearing someone out of your life is like tearing off part of your body. And Shanna and Jeff and Matt, we pray that our presence today, these amazing hymns that touch us deep in our soul, our nourishment in this time of grief. We also know that grief is kind of like a a fickle girlfriend, right? She comes and goes and hits you 
upside the head when you're not waiting for it and never quite leaves. And so you'll have moments when you're just sitting at a stop sign and you forget that you're even in a car driving and suddenly somebody will beep behind you and you'll remember, oh, this is where I am, this is where I'm going. Kind of makes me think of that story of art at the tiller. <laughs> you're going to hit that buoy, steer to port. He was a person of deep love and deep faith and what a gift to have known him and a gift to have served with him in this church and a gift to celebrate him today and to see these lessons that he picked about love and about loving one another and caring for one another. And you've heard probably two million sermons on sheep and how dumb they are and how messy they get and how you have to pull them out of brambles because they wander off looking for the tastiest grass. And I think Art knew all that when he picked this. And he was still willing to love us, even though we are like sheep as well. So I give thanks for Art today, for the depth of his love, the depth of his faith, the way that he tirelessly shared that with others through the Eucharist by being a Eucharistic visitor in this place. I thank him for his ability to, like the Ecclesiastes writing, know that there is a time to toss stones away and a time to gather stones together. That's an image in Hebrew scripture of memorializing a location, usually when somebody has died, you make a marker of that. He did an amazing job pulling himself together after the loss of Wendy, a true soulmate to him and an amazing mom. And he still found it in his heart to keep loving the people around him and love across language barriers and cultural barriers and to be a person of love in that time of COVID when all of us were just retreating and shutting down. So he truly knew that love of Christ, that love that is constantly expanding. Think of that passage where Jesus says, there are others not of this fold, I must bring them also. Art was a lover, not a fighter, and he knew that to love the way Jesus loved was an expansive job. And now I truly believe that we do not go from life to death, but we just go from life to life through a doorway that we call death. And he is continuing to grow in love. And hopefully at some point we feel that when we think we hear his laugh around the corner or we think we see somebody who reminds us of him or we go out on a sailboat and we start to tune in with the beauty of the waves and the sky and God's presence all around us, that we know that art is expanding in his love and that that can feed our souls in our journeys as well. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. During the prayers, you may stand, sit, or kneel as you are able. Let us pray to God, our Creator, saying, Hear our prayer. Loving God, you call your people together in the mystical body of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Grant to us who are still on our earthly pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sin and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant that art, increasing in the knowledge and love of you, may go from strength to strength in a new life of perfect service. Grant to his family and to all who mourn a sure confidence in your tender mercy that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage to all who are bereaved, that in the days ahead they may hold fast to the comfort of a holy hope and a joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Help us entrust art to your never-failing care and love. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Father of all, we pray to you for art and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And may his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you, also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal bodies lie in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at God's table.
Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. For sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator of maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth. And to earth shall we return. For so you did ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Art. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
since I dismiss you, you can read that you are welcome to follow the procession to our churchyard for the interment. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia!